Welcome back. Let's start with this example. We want to find the derivative of 13 to the power of x. And so this is an exponential function where the base is not e. And so what we're going to need to use to find a derivative of this function is this derivative rule right here. We have that the derivative of the exponential function a to the power of x, where a is a positive real number, is equal to that function a to the power of x times the natural log of the base a. And so if we use that in this scenario, where a is equal to 13, then we will have that this is equal to 13 to the power of x times the natural log of 13. And that will be the derivative of this function. Next, we have the derivative of log base 10 of x. And so in this case, we have a log function with a base of 10, right? That is not e. If it was e, then we'd have the natural log function. But in this case, we have log base 10. And in order to find the derivative, we are going to need to use this derivative rule, which says that the derivative of a log function with a base of a is equal to 1 divided by the natural log of a, that base, times x. And so in this case, a, our base, is equal to 10. And so this will be equal to 1 divided by the natural log of 10 times x. And that is the derivative of the log function with a base of 10. All right, let's look at some more examples. Next, we have the derivative of 6 to the power of x cubed plus 4. And so in order to take the derivative of this function, we are going to need to use a variation of the derivative rule from before. In this case, we have that the derivative of a to the power of u, where u is a function of x, that is equal to a to the power of u times the natural log of a times the derivative of u. And so this is just the chain rule in action for an exponential function that has a base other than e, right? So if you have an exponential function where the power is a function other than just x, you're going to need to use this version of the derivative rule for these exponential functions. And so for this example, u is going to be equal to x cubed plus 4. And so if we use this derivative rule, we will have that the derivative is equal to 6 to the power of x cubed plus 4 times the natural log of the base, 6, times the derivative of u, right? And so u is x cubed plus 4. And so we're going to multiply by the derivative of that function. And the derivative of x cubed will be 3x squared. If we use the power rule, right, we multiply the exponent down. So we have 3 times x to the power of the exponent minus 1. And so we subtract 1 from 3 and have an exponent of 2, OK? And so this is the derivative of this function. For our next example, we have the derivative of log base 4 of x to the fourth power minus x. And so similar to our last example, we are going to need to use a variation of the derivative rule for a log with a base of a, or a base that is not e, for when we have a function that is not just x inside the log function, right? So if we want to find the derivative of log base a of u, where u is some function of x, that is equal to 1 divided by the natural log of a times u, right, whatever is inside the log function times the derivative of u. And so if we use that in this scenario, we will have that the derivative is equal to 1 divided by the natural log of the base, 4, times what is inside the log function. So we'll have x to the power of 4 minus x, and that's going to be multiplied by the derivative of that function inside the log function. And so the derivative of x to the fourth power, if we use the power rule, will be 4x cubed because we would multiply the 4 down to have 4 times x to the power of 4 minus 1. And so we're left with 3. All right. And then we need to take the derivative of negative x, which the derivative of x to the first power is just equal to its coefficient. And so that will be negative 1. OK, and so then we'll multiply that derivative by this fraction here. And we can simplify to have that this is equal to 4x cubed minus 1 divided by the natural log of 4 times x to the fourth power minus x. And that will be the final answer or the derivative of this function. So here we have the function f of x is equal to x times 8 to the power of x. And we want to find f prime of x or the derivative of this function. And so how are we going to find the derivative of x times 8 to the power of x? Well, we're going to need to use the product rule for derivatives because we have two functions being multiplied together, right? Our first function is x, and that is being multiplied by the second function, 8 to the power of x. 
And so if you don't quite remember the product rule, I'll have it up here on the screen for you to reference. And if we use that, we will have that f prime of x is equal to that first function, x times the derivative of the second function, and the derivative of eight to the power of x will be eight to the power of x times the natural log of the base, eight, right? We just rewrite the exponential function and then multiply by the natural log of the base. And then we will add that to our second function, eight to the power of x times the derivative of the first function, which is x. And the derivative of x is just going to be one because x is to the first power. And so the derivative of that will just be its coefficient, which is one. And so we can rewrite this and have that this is equal to x times eight to the power of x times the natural log of eight plus eight to the power of x. But now notice that both of these terms have a common factor of eight to the power of x. And so I can pull that out and we'll have that this is equal to eight to the power of x times x times the natural log of eight plus one. Okay, and so this is the derivative of this function. For our next example, we have that g of x is equal to log base three of x times sine x, and we wanna find the derivative g prime of x. And so in order to take the derivative of this function, it's going to be helpful to know the properties of logarithmic functions. And so one of the properties of logs that's going to be helpful in this scenario is that if you have the log with some base a of a value b times another value c, that is equal to the log base a of b plus the log base a of c, right? So if we have two values being multiplied together inside the log function, we can split that up into two log functions where we have the log of the first value, b, plus the log of the second value, c. And so for our function here, we have log base three of x times sine x. And so if x is b and sine is c, we can split this up into two separate logs that will make this a whole lot easier to find the derivative of. Because in its current state, if we were to go through the rule for taking the derivative of the log function, we would have to take the derivative of this inside function where these two functions are being multiplied together, and that would require the product rule, and so that would get very complicated very quickly. And so instead, let's split this up into two log functions. We will have that this is equal to log base three of x plus log base three of sine x. And so now that we use that property, this is going to be a whole lot easier to take the derivative of. So we will have that g prime of x is equal to the derivative of log base three of x, and that's just gonna be equal to one divided by the natural log of that base three times x. And then we will add that to the derivative of log base three of sine of x, which we're going to have to use the chain rule for in order to find its derivative. And so we'll start by having one divided by the natural log of the base, which is three, and then multiply that by the function inside the log function. So we'll have sine of x, and then we will multiply by the derivative of that inside function. And the derivative of sine is cosine, and so we'll multiply by cosine x. And so then to simplify this derivative, note that in this term, we're going to have cosine in the top here and sine in the denominator. And we know that from one of our trigonometric identities, that cosine divided by sine is equal to cotangent. And so we can simplify this a little bit and rewrite the derivative to be equal to one divided by the natural log of three times x plus cotangent of x divided by the natural log of three. Okay, and so then I'm going to want to simplify this a little bit more yet. Let's try to combine these two fractions by getting a common denominator, right? In the denominator of this term, we have the natural log of three times x, but in this term, we just have the natural log of three in the denominator. And so if we multiply by a form of one of x divided by x, then this will have the same denominator as this fraction, and so we can combine them. And so if I clean up my work here, we will have that this is equal to one divided by the natural log of three times x plus x times cotangent x divided by the natural log of three times x. And so then we can combine the numerators since they now have the same denominator. And so this will be equal to one plus x times cotangent x divided by the natural log of three times x. All right, and so this is the final answer for the derivative of the function g of x. Next, we have y is equal to nine to the power of tangent x 
and we want to find y prime, or the derivative, of this function. And so since we have an exponential function where the power is not just x, we are going to need to use the chain rule in order to find this derivative. Right, so we'll start by saying that y prime is going to be equal to that same function, right? That's the first step. You just rewrite your function. So you'll have nine to the power of tangent x, and then you will multiply by the natural log of the base, which is nine, and then you will multiply by the derivative of that exponent. And so the derivative of tangent x is secant squared x, and so we will multiply by secant squared x. Okay, and so that is the derivative of this function. Next, we have that y is equal to log base two of the square root of x squared plus one, and we wanna find the derivative dy dx. And so for this example, we have a log with a base that is not e of a function that is not just x. And so we're probably going to want to use the chain rule here, but there's something else that we can do first that is going to make this a little bit easier to find a derivative of, and that is to remember another property of logarithmic functions. If we have the log of some base a of some value b to the power of n, that is equal to n times the log of base a of that value b, right? We can take that exponent from the inside of the log function and pull it to the outside and multiply it by that log function. And so for this example here, you might not initially see where the power is, but remember that you can rewrite the square root function to be the one half power of whatever is inside the square root. And so we could rewrite y to be equal to log base two of x squared plus one to the one half power. And so now our function resembles what we have in this property right here, that we can take a power inside the log function, right, this one half power, and bring it to the outside and multiply it by the log function. And so y is equal to one half times log base two of x squared plus one. Okay, and so what that did for us is it made it a whole lot easier to take the derivative of this function. Before, this inside function, when we took the derivative of it as part of the chain rule, would have required using the chain rule again because we have a function inside the square root and that would have gotten a little messy and a lot more complicated than it would have needed to be. And so now it's gonna be a lot simpler to find the derivative. And so let's do that now. We will have that y prime is equal to one half times the derivative of log base two of x squared plus one. Now we're still gonna to have to use the chain rule version of the derivative of a log function, but it's not gonna to be too bad. We're just gonna have one divided by the natural log of the base, which is two times whatever is inside the log function. And so we will multiply by x squared plus one and then we wanna multiply that fraction by the derivative of that inside function. And so the derivative of x squared is going to be two x, right? If we use the power rule for derivatives, we multiply the two down, and so we have two times x, and then we subtract one from the exponent, and so we have two minus one to have a power of one, okay? And then the derivative of one is just zero because one is a constant, and the derivative of any constant is zero. And so we can simplify this by noting that this two in the numerator and this two in the denominator are going to cancel out. And so we'll have that y prime is equal to x divided by the natural log of two times x squared plus one. And so this is our final answer or the derivative of this function. So next up we have the function h of t is equal to two to the power of t divided by t. And we wanna find h prime of t or the derivative of this function. And so in order to take the derivative of this function, we are going to need to use the quotient rule because we have a quotient of two functions, right? We have two to the power of t divided by t. And so if you do not quite remember the quotient rule, I'll have it up here on the screen for you to reference. And so if we use it, we will have that h prime of t will be equal to that denominator function t times the derivative of the numerator function. And so the derivative of two to the power of t, that would be like taking the derivative of two to the power of x, right? And so we'll start by just rewriting our exponential function. We will have two to the power of t, and then we will multiply by the natural log of the base, which is two. All right, and then if you wanted to, you can multiply by the derivative of the exponent, but in this case, the derivative of t is just one, just like the derivative of x is just one. And so we don't need to multiply by one because that's not going to change anything. And so we are done with the derivative of our numerator function. And so then we will subtract 
the numerator function. So we'll have two to the power of t times the derivative of the denominator function. And in this case, the derivative of t is just one, right? The derivative of a variable to the first power is just equal to its coefficient. And so in this case, that is one. And then this will all be divided by the denominator squared. And so we will have t squared. Okay, and so now we're done with using the quotient rule. And so now we can simplify what we have here. This will be equal to t times two to the power of t times the natural log of two minus two to the power of t divided by t squared. All right, and so then there's one more thing that we can do to simplify this. Notice that in the numerator here that we have two to the power of t in both of these terms. And so we can pull that out. And so we'll have that this is equal to two to the power of t times t times the natural log of two minus one. And that will be divided by that same denominator of t squared. Okay, and so then this is h prime of t, or the derivative of this function. All right, let's look at one more example for this video. All right, so here we have that z is equal to log base 10 of x plus two divided by x cubed minus one. And we wanna find the derivative dz dx. Okay, and so if we're gonna find the derivative of this function, notice that the inside function of the log function is a quotient. And so if we were to go through with the derivative process for a log function, we would have to multiply by the derivative of this inside function, which would require using the quotient rule, which would take a little bit of extra work. And so in order to avoid that, we will use another property of logarithmic functions, right? We've already seen the multiplication property and the exponent property, but now we will look at the quotient property, which is that if you have the log of some base a of some value b divided by some value c, that is equal to the log base a of b minus log base a of c, right? So you can split up this log function into two log functions where you have the log of the numerator b minus the log of the denominator c. And so if we use that for this function right here, we will have that z is equal to log base 10 of x plus two, the numerator minus log base 10 of x cubed minus one, the denominator. All right, and so now that we have done that, we have two simpler functions that we will be able to take the derivative of. And so let's do that next. Let's take the derivative of log base 10 of x plus two, and then of log base 10 of x cubed minus one. And so we will have that dz dx is equal to the derivative of this function, which is going to be one divided by the natural log of the base of the log, which is 10, times whatever is inside that log function. So we will have x plus two, and then we need to multiply by the derivative of that inside function. But the derivative of x is just one, and the derivative of two is zero because two is a constant, and so we're just gonna be multiplying by one. And then we will subtract the derivative of this function, and so the derivative of this log function will be one divided by the natural log of the base, which is 10, times whatever function is inside the log function. So we will have x cubed minus one, and then we will multiply by the derivative of that inside function. And so the derivative of x cubed, if we use the power rule, is three x squared, right? We multiply the exponent down, so we have three times x, and then we subtract one from the exponent, and so three minus one is two, and so that's why the exponent is two. And then the derivative of negative one is zero because negative one is a constant. Okay, and so then if we clean up our work here, we can simplify, and this will be equal to one divided by the natural log of 10 times x plus two minus three x squared divided by the natural log of 10 times x cubed minus one. All right, and so this is a perfectly acceptable answer for the derivative of this function. However, you might be interested in combining these two fractions by getting a common denominator. And so if you're interested in seeing how that would be done, I'll have the work up here on the screen for you to look at. And so feel free to pause the video and look over that if you'd like to. Okay, and so with that, that was all the examples I had for this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. But if you don't have any questions, this is all I had for now. So I will see you next time.